So in this video we're going to be doing an electric vehicle tow test because I'm interested to find out what it's like to tow a small caravan and a car trailer with an electric vehicle and also look at the effect on the range of the electric vehicle when it's towing. So here's our two cars, we've got the Hyundai Ioniq 5 electric vehicle and we also have a Ford Ranger PX powered by a diesel engine. The two trailers are a Jayco J-Pod and my car trailer and we're going to swap them from vehicle to vehicle. So we're going to do runs um, on our test route with only the Ranger, nothing attached to it, only the Ioniq 5, nothing attached to it and then both cars are going to pull both trailers and then we're going to compare the results and here's the route we drove there's three parts to it sector one is a 10 kilometer loop not exceeding 60 kilometers an hour a lot of stop start a lot of uh, waiting at traffic lights and then um, from here up to this freeway exit um, that's 39 kilometers that's mostly 110 kilometers an hour and there's a lot of hills going up and down hills and this that's our freeway exit and then the third sector is from that exit back down here and then that's 100 k's an hour at some um, hills loops but nothing nothing too dramatic there a um, little bit of stop start but pretty much flowing so three quite different sectors we're going to go through the results for each one of those combinations See if we can work out the fan controls though. No, 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 let's no. leave them off. No fans. No fans. No fans. No, because I don't want to change the, so we, however hot or warm it gets, we're just going to have to suffer right now, because otherwise the, it will be inconsistent from test to test. So, sorry Rob, you're just going to have to, try not to smell too much I was sweat. I was worried about getting cold. <laughs> now it's going to be boiling. Well, I'm not going to give you a hug. You're just, you're just going to have to just suffer for the sake of science. Right? The first thing we've got to do is charge the car and that starts off with opening the charge port. So I hold this down and then that opens up and you pop out the blanking plate there. And then we have to get the charging system going. Now I'm going to use the EV app because this is an EV charger. There we go, it says on it. Um, then I find the charger that I want um, which is station MM002A and there's two available which is your Chadimo and your CCS I want the CCS so then I grab the CCS which is here and then um, I take that plug it into the car there's a reassuring beep and then I click begin charge and because I want to go to 90% that should now be going oh, so I've got to, still got to pay for it connecting now by default it goes to 80% I want to go to the maximum so I'm going to hit that I'm actually going to stop it at 90% but I've told the car to stop charging at 90% for speed purposes because the time taken for it to charge above 80% is a lot slower than it is um, below 80% so now I just press the start button and you can actually see the electricity flowing into the car now as you'll have noticed it says um, the charge session is underway great now the charging ports are not really set up for trailers as you can see um, I don't really want to unhook the trailer which is why I have um, just come in at this angle here and it is a bit unsociable because if anybody wanted to use this extra charging point then um, I would obviously have to unhitch the trailer and let them let them in which which I would do but as no one else is around I'm just going to take up two bays but um, yeah if you're going to tow charging your car at the same time is difficult all right, so exactly what I hoped wouldn't happen has happened. I've been to this charger many times by myself, very lonely. The moment I have a trailer hooked up, someone else arrives. And what was your name? Alex. Alex, okay. And Alex owns a electric Kona. Yeah. Um, and she's very kindly agreed not to make me unhitch the trailer and let her in and just parked it on the curb here. So thank you, Alex, for that. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us a bit about your Kona. Why did you buy? How, how are you finding it? 
So it was really interesting to talk to a real world EV user about why she bought it and how she uses it, but it's not relevant to towing, so it's all gone in a separate video. But cool. All right, so the car is charged to 90%, so I can just pull that out, pop the blanking plate back in, click close, and then we are ready to go. So thanks to Hyundai for lending me the Ionic and Jayco for lending me the J-Pod. Now picking the trailer was actually quite difficult. There's not that many small light caravans available and actually making sure it was within the Ionic 5's tow limitations was quite an effort as well and I've got a separate video where I explain all about that. So this sped up video is the entire test route covering starting from the fast DC charger going through urban and then freeway then rural areas and it's 106 kilometers before we got back to the DC fast charger. Now we use the onboard computers to measure energy and that's uh, kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers in the Ionic and liters per 100 kilometers in the Ranger. We use the same driver in each case for each car. Um, we went to the speed limit. Um, we didn't use the heating or cooling in the EV because that has an effect on range and it was all done on the same day. So it's as consistent as it possibly can be and there's pretty big differences. So I'm pretty confident in the accuracy of the results. This is our brief stop just coming off the freeway and we do that just to check that we've got numbers and record them before we move on to start the rural leg. Now whenever you approach an EV charger you always look at it with a certain sense of trepidation because... Okay what do you reckon is there going to be another EV at the charger or is it just going to be Alex we're going to see today? No look it's free. Free as in no one's there not as in... Um, no payment required. So run one is done. The Ionic didn't want to let me back up the trailer, but we fixed that. And then we charged for one hour, seven minutes to put 64% of the battery capacity back in. And then we were ready to head off. And of course, because I had unhitched the trailer, no one else wanted to use the charger. So another reason we chose this location was because it wasn't very busy and therefore we had space to be able to manoeuvre the trailers and change them from one vehicle to another, which is important. So at this point we've charged the Ionic and we have swapped the trailers between the two vehicles. So I'm off in the Ionic towing the car trailer. Got to remember that's a fair bit longer than the J-Pod. So you've got to swing out a bit further around corners. And then off we go to see what sort of consumption we're going to get with different trailers. So back at the halfway mark and yeah, this time we definitely are seeing a difference in consumption. I'm going to go through all of those results in a moment. All right, so the test is completed. So we're just collecting all the data, making sure that I've collected everyone's views, results, information, and everything else. There's a lot of data capture going on for a test like, like this. Then I take it all home and do an awful lot of number crunching, edit up the video, and that's what you are seeing now. Okay, so here's the results. I'm gonna go through a bit of detail then summarize at the end with, with, with some headlines. So the way I'm doing it is that here's the Ionic and it is driving by itself on the urban loop only. You can see the range is about 500 kilometers. Then if we take the Ionic and a car trailer also on the urban loop, then you can see that there's a significant range drop as you'd expect because a trailer will take more energy. We put the J-Pod on it and it's not too dissimilar to the car trailer, it uses a little bit more energy. Now here's the Ranger by itself on the urban loop only. And you can see that at that um, rate, we'd get a range of over 800 kilometers and again I'm working off the Ranger's 80 litre tank there although I do have an extended range tank in it. Car trailer drops it down a bit and the J-Pod drops it down a bit as well but you can see that it's pretty similar the drop there. Um, the EV is however more affected by the trailer already at this point than the Ranger is. Now with the freeway we can see a significant drop in consumption, um, so increase in consumption drop in range with the Ionic only. Um, and then with the trailer, again, there, there's another significant drop. And with the J-Pod, again, it's even greater. So the trailer is really affecting the EV. It doesn't affect the Ranger to the 
same degree the, the, the drop is, at, is actually less and you'll see that in the summary then we come on to the rural section this is the 80 to 100 k's an hour um, um, part uh, no real stop start so slower speeds and the range here with the ionic only is fairly close to, to what it was in the um, in the urban area and you can see that that's also true of the car trailer but with the j-pod and this is quite significant here um, you can see that the car trailer hasn't affected range that much compared to the urban but the j-pod massively has and again remember the car trailer is heavier reason for that is aerodynamics and speed now with the um, Ranger, we actually got the greatest range from it in that rural area because diesel engines really um, don't like stop and start and it's a fairly heavy vehicle. If you can keep it flowing with, with um, minimal change of speed then you get the best economy. Car trailer, again um, um, pretty good e efficiency there and um, with the J-Pod again um, also pretty good efficiency. But um, the trailers affect the Ranger far less than they do the EV. Now here's where I'm going to put the numbers in. Um, the range of the Ionic, if I basically take its energy consumption over that loop and extrapolate it out from 0 to 100% was 359 kilometers. Remember that's coming off a WLTP range of 420 but like any standard energy consumption figure you always got to take that with a pinch of salt be that diesel, petrol, electric or whatever else. Now with the trailer on the back, um, the combined, and that's combined across um, all three segments, um, 234 kilometres is what the range would be if I extrapolated it out, and that's 35% less. And if we, with the J-Pod, it actually goes to 56% less, so that gives us a range of about 160 kilometres, which really isn't very much. With the Ranger, 644 um, kilometres is the range. Um, we put a car trailer on the back, we take 21% off that, 500 and the J-Pod drops it down 24%. So again, what we're seeing there is that the um, range of a vehicle is much um, affected by a trailer, but with an EV, it's, it's significantly changed, significantly reduced, and less so with a uh, diesel four-wheel drive. So the question you're probably wondering now is, why is EV range so affected by towing? Well, the short answer is aerodynamics. The longer answer, if you're interested, is in another video where I've broken exactly why it is the case that EVs are so affected by towing and why aerodynamics is so important. So please watch that. But for the moment, there is a couple of other points I want to make in this video. And here's an energy speed graph. So this is liters per hundred. So this is basically energy consumption. And here is speed. Speed. Now this is the Ranger with the J-Pod and you can see that um, we start off with a fairly high, well highish fuel consumption about 8 and then the faster we go that starts to reduce so the most efficient speed for long range is probably about 35 um, k's an hour and then the faster we go the shorter the range, the greater the energy consumption builds up. Um, and this is why you get a massive increase in range and less fuel consumption if you're cruising at 100 as opposed to 110. It sort of increases exponentially. Again, see my other video for that. Now, if I add the Ranger only, you can see that the graph looks pretty much the same, but it's not a million miles away um, because um, it, aerodynamics is important but the drag of the trailer has less of a percentage effect on the Ranger than it does on an EV. Now if we plot the same thing for the EV, this time I'm going to do the Ionic only, you see that this graph looks a little bit different. It starts off um, high but then it drops down just to touch there that's because EVs are really really efficient vehicles and you know at idle they're not really doing anything at 1k an hour they're hardly using any um, energy at all whereas with a diesel engine it's actually using a lot of energy just to keep itself turning over that's why this dip isn't so much but um, and you can see that the rate of increase here is actually the same so 100 110 is a greater increase in energy use than let's say 60 to 70 but it's not as dramatic and the reason for that is um, the EV is more aerodynamically efficient. Now if we put the J-Pod on and look look at this, this just sort of goes, okay, we're just going to use a lot more. That's because the EV is so aerodynamically efficient, you add something draggy like a trailer to it and it just goes, wow, that's just a lot more energy. So that gives you an idea of what that looks like. And this, finally, this grey one here, that's um, a Kona EV, which I had uh, in 2019. So I, I did the same 
test across here and plotted that um, energy usage. So again, that says that the most efficient speed for an EV is actually really quite low. It's down here, but the faster you go, um, it has less of an effect on energy use, but still the increase in energy use on an EV from 100 to 110 is greater than from, let's say, 50 to 60. Now I'm going to show a little clip which really describes the difference between the J-Pod and the car trailer and why I chose to run those two trailers. Have a look at it. All right, so we're going downhill now and you can see that even though we're going um, downhill, um, then you can see that the charge here, it's, it's, we're not getting any regen out of it. We're actually using power to drive the car downhill because of that aerodynamic drag. And um, so that's another problem with towing with, with EVs, you, you lose your regen. Driven this road so many times. Yeah. Yeah, here we go. So we're getting, we're getting charge. A little bit of charge. Every little bit helps. Now power. All right, so what you saw there was the Ionic towing both vehicle, both trailers down a hill, but in, in the case of the car trailer, we're actually getting a little bit of regen here. In other words, as we're going down, then there is enough, re the vehicle's starting to slow down, um, and that means that there's actually some regeneration going into the vehicle's battery. And you can tell because it's not the greatest GoPro, I apologize for that, um, but you can see here that the charge rate, it, it's actually zero, and if you look close to here you can see they're actually getting a little bit of regen fed into the battery not a lot but a little bit now in contrast with the j-pod over here you can see that we're using probably about 10 kilowatt hours um, over here and you can see that there's a significance there so going down the hill with the car trailer at 110, we were getting charge into the battery. Going down the hill with the J-Pod at 110, we we're actually using battery power. So again, aerodynamics, aerodynamics, that's what's so important for EVs. Now this is actually my second time tow testing with an EV. I've also driven a Tesla X, which you can see here towing a T-Van. And whilst I didn't do all the exact tests I did this time round, I did find that the range was similarly reduced. So how does an electric vehicle tow compared to a diesel car? Well, much better is the short answer. To begin with, you've got a lot of weight on the vehicle. It's heavier than a typical diesel would be. And you want to have a heavy vehicle relative to the trailer for stability. I've got videos which demonstrate that. You also have in the EVs the weight ideally located from a dynamics perspective. It's central between the axles and low, which is exactly where you want it for the purposes of trailer and car stability. Then you've got the electric motor, and that's just great because it's very responsive and it just gives you seamless torque to just accelerate, um, overtaking as a breeze. It's great to have, have that reserve of, of power and torque. It's very, very drivable, very usable car. And I think that follow response is something which is often overlooked. There's no gears to down change, no down shifting. It's just completely seamless. Then there's also the deceleration, and I think that's fantastic as well. Reason being is that as soon as you come off the accelerator, like I'm doing now, the car just slows down. So you can really very, uh, precisely and instantly modulate your speed even coming downhill you don't really need to use the brakes you can just simply come off the accelerator and in high pedal mode the ionic actually does a really good job of regulating speed and then finally there's the hookup and the hitching so when you are slow speed maneuvering a car you want it to be quiet so you can hear what's going on people guiding you and any electric vehicles are quiet the responsiveness at slow speed yeah um, I don't think the Ionic's really optimised for that, but there's no reason it, it couldn't be. But one big advantage is that when you are backing up to hitch up a trailer, then you can hear people guide you, but also when you bend down to put the chains on, the electrics, your Anderson plug, whatever you have, breakaway cable, then there's no noxious exhaust fumes coming out of the car, and that's just, just nice. So overall, I would say that electric vehicles are fantastic for towing. I think they're superior in every way to a diesel 
vehicle with the exception of range and that's really what's going to hold things back in Australia. Okay so let's take a look at costs now um, I'm excluding sort of um, one-off costs per year such as uh, servicing etc. EVs definitely have an advantage there they require next to no servicing so um, I have done other analysis where I go through that sort of overall five-year cost of ownership um, thing but let's just look at how much it would cost per kilometre. Now I'm going to assume a 400 kilometre tow for no other reason and that's often what some people do in a day, some people do way more, some people do less, I just picked 400. Now the cost of an EV to tow that is going to depend on a couple of things and one is how much you pay per kilowatt hour. Now that could be nothing, there are places where you can charge for free. NRO may have some good um, free charges and they're fast charges, so you pay zero for that. You might be able to get it in effect for free if you buy a meal or something like that as well. But I think typically if you're going to be on the road, you're going to be needing to uh, charge the car fairly frequently at commercial DC fast charges and the cost for those is for maybe 20 but typically 40 cents a kilowatt hour and they definitely go up as high as 60 and I have heard of people going um, 80 or above. So I multiplied out um, the consumption on the combined cycle that I have, have before, added um, a little bit um, of uh, extra, so instead of 160 kilometres made it sort of 140 to give me a bit of, bit of range there, and um, that's what I calculate out to be $73 in charging. The brackets here refers to the road user charge, which is two and a half cents a kilometre at the moment in Victoria. You may or may not need to pay that depending on what state you're in, etc. Um, but $70 to $80 to, to tow um, 400 kilometres, um, that, that could be what you're looking at. Now, again, with a diesel car, obviously the price of diesel does vary quite a bit, so, so that's quite a variation there. And same sort of thing, extrapolating what the Ranger did on the combined, uh, it cost me $127 at $2.20 a litre in order to tow that caravan uh, 400 kilometres. So the EV is ahead, um, but um, one thing you've got to remember about the Ranger, it's highly modified, it's heavy, and it uses more fuel than, let's say, a diesel SUV would be. So you could expect these costs to come down and get a lot closer to the EV, but then you've got to consider servicing as well. The takeaway from this is that I think with an EV it would be cheaper to tow, but the difference between EV and diesel for per kilometre cost would be a lot closer than if you weren't towing. So just make sure you run those numbers and don't necessarily think you're going to be saving a lot of money um, towing with an EV. Okay, now let's look at time to tow. Again, we're going to just take that 400 kilometres. So I've assumed we're going to start at 100%, haven't factored that in. And again, um, with that, I've gone for 140 kilometre range because that combined figure was 160. I've taken 20 off because you're not going to find a charger at 0%. You've got to find it a bit before that. Um, so that's a 90 minute charge, approximately 70 minute, two hours, six minutes to, to charge on route. Um, and with the Ranger, well, you basically start it full again. I'm not taking that. You just drive it and you do the 400 kilometres and you'd still have 92 kilometres of range left. Um, but in fairness, not many people would, would drive 400 kilometres in one go. You'd probably want one 30 minute stop in there. So, but the thing is you could choose whether you stopped or not, where that stop is and for how long, whereas the EV, um, you don't have that uh, flexibility. And this assumes the correctly spaced charges. And it also at the end, um, if you want to drive anywhere, you've got 92 k's of range with this quickly filled a car. With an EV, if you come to your caravan park, whatever else, and you know, you've got a low charge, you've then got to charge the car before you can realistically go anywhere with it. So time-wise, um, yeah, um, there's just no comparison. The diesel vehicle will just get you places so much faster than the EV. All right, so summarise everything that I've found so far. Um, EVs are great tow cars. I really think that I would prefer to tow with an electric vehicle than any diesel in a like-for-like -like scenario for all the reasons that I explained earlier in the video. But they do take a lot of extra time. You've got to find a charger, potentially divert out of your way. You might have to unhitch the trailer. Then you've got to um, charge it up and then you've got to look for the next charger. It's, it's actually quite a bit of overhead and effort. And the cost savings, um, EVs are a, def a hell of a lot cheaper to run. And the reason they're not cost effective for most Australians isn't the run cost, it's actually the high purchase price and what else you could do with the money 
etc. I've gone into that in another video. But that, that difference between diesel, petrol and electric narrows significantly when, when you're towing. And aerodynamics, it's really all about aerodynamics. You've got to make your caravans as slippery and aerodynamically efficient as you can. And EV charge points, as I said, they're not, they're not set up for trailers. Um, it's probably a niche within a niche, so you can't really expect that, but it is, it is annoying. And I'd hate to, to pull a really big trailer into a crowded car park. And um, I actually had to, we actually did that in a shopping center. So I had to go and park the trailer and then drive the car back. And it was, yeah, just a lot of extra grief. Um, there's not that many EVs which are tow rated and they can't really tow heavy. Now, this is not a, a limitation of the EV technology at all. It's simply a reflection of the market. The Rivian can tow really heavy, but it's not here yet. It doesn't have a great range when towing, but um, it can certainly tow really heavy. And again, for short range, I'd rather tow with an EV um, than I would uh, an ICE vehicle. Now, I didn't get into this in a lot, but I will in another video. Braking and brake controllers, that's a bit of a different world. Um, and I will do some technical exploration of that in another video compared to what you would be used to in a petrol vehicle. And vehicle to load. So you can get to your campsite or whatever else there. And you can actually start to use the car to power things, which obviously you can't really do effectively in a petrol or diesel. So I think that's really an interesting and, and, and great idea to explore for those of us who camp um, remotely. Okay, so that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. Any questions or comments, um, please use the comment section. I'll answer best as I can and maybe do a follow-up. Again, thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful.